could rewrite our history books on where we came from and what other creatures evolved with us. My dogs will go into earthquake mode if there's going to be an earthquake in Japan, Jakarta, wherever on the planet. I was taking some rubbish out one night, and what should I see leaping along in the half-light but a beautiful golden frog? Can animals foretell natural disasters? And what is the ancient legend of Britain's golden frogs? Animal X investigates the weird world of animal mysteries. First, the intriguing tale of the Minnesota Iceman, a cheap hoax or a rare glimpse of the elusive missing link. December 16th, 1968. Dr. Bernard Huvelmans, a Belgian zoologist, stares deep into a block of ice. Inside a freezing tomb lay a creature, not quite human, not quite ape. Over a period of three days, he and science writer Ivan Sanderson examined the corpse in detail. Could this strange being have been the missing link science has searched for? And if it was, why did it disappear? I think the Minnesota Iceman was indeed a freshly killed corpse. It could rewrite our history books on where we came from and what other creatures evolved with us. A hairy human being, uh, not belonging to any known race. Animal X travels to Hanoi, Vietnam, but first to America to investigate the legend of the Iceman whose origins can be found in a fairground in Chico, California. In 1967, when a showman by the name of Frank Hansen put a new exhibit on the circuit, it became known as the Minnesota Iceman. History recalls this creature as being a cheap hoax, but it's claimed nothing could be further from the truth. Hominid researcher Lori Pye witnessed the Iceman for himself. It triggered a lifelong passion. The body was in a seven-foot freezer, long and about three feet wide and about three and a half feet deep. It was put in with its knees lifted up a little bit, and it had its arm up over its head. Over the years, showman Frank Hansen came out with several stories about how this creature was found. At one point, Hansen even claimed to have killed it himself in the Minnesota woods. Lloyd Pye believes this is a credible story. It sees him. It puts its arm up like this to protect its face. The, he shoots through the wrist. The bullet plows right between those two bones, goes into the eye, and blows out the back of the head. Anthropologist Dr. Helmut Luce Wasaura of the Australian National University believes that the creature may, in fact, have originated in Vietnam. Within the so-called demilitarized zone came a, a very strange report that was published on the 1st of November 1966. These U.S. Marines in that area had shot and killed a big ape. Large apes shouldn't exist in Vietnam. And interestingly, there was a connection between showman Hansen and this area. Frank Hansen is an ex-fighter pilot of the United States um, Air Force, of a unit which was stationed in Da Nang. Frank Hansen starts to exhibit a creature which responds very well to that description of being a huge ape, just a few weeks practically after this first mention of this creature. Could the big ape killed in Vietnam have been the same creature Hansen had on display? Animal X travels to Vietnam to investigate the connection between the two. Professor Vu Kui, Vietnam's leading biologist, went to investigate reports on behalf of the government of man-ape-like creatures being sighted during the war. Professor Kui says he met some soldiers who worked at an American base. 
They told him, in about 1965, a helicopter brought in a strange animal. After a couple of hours, they think it was taken to Da Nang. Director of Primatology from Vietnam National University, Vu Nan Tang, adds to this story he believes to be true from local witnesses. Tang says the South Vietnamese soldiers put the creature on display in Kantum. It was on display alive, and many people can describe it. Did Hansen's army contacts provide him with a showpiece which was smuggled back to the United States and put on display as the Minnesota Iceman? Hovelmans, the zoologist who examined the Iceman, has pondered the same question. Regardless of the creature's origins, he took his findings to the Smithsonian and labeled his discovery Homo pongoides, meaning a species between man and ape. Today, Hovelmans is gravely ill, but he still stands by his findings of 30 years ago. Bob Smith, an ex-private investigator and police detective, has looked at the Iceman story in detail. The FBI began investigating it under two possible crimes. One, homicide, if it was indeed a human-type creature, and two, a federal crime of transporting a corpse across state line. I've talked to Frank, and it doesn't matter to me which picture you paint, Frank was harassed, that I truly believe the creature was real. Because Frank became upset, became nervous, the creature disappeared. In the creature's place came claims from Hansen that he now had a copy or a model of the original on show. The Smithsonian and the FBI turned down the heat. Bernard Hovelmans believes the key to the world's greatest mystery was lost when rumors started appearing about the so-called model. He also believes the Minnesota Iceman was the missing link, some kind of Neanderthal man. This being would have fitted quite neatly into this range. And my seeing it leads me to believe that it was a juvenile Bigfoot. Juvenile Bigfoot or Vietnamese ape man? If the Iceman was such an important find, maybe this is the reason it disappeared. Irregardless of how it came to be in the block of ice, where it actually originated from, that's going to be a difficult question for us to ever answer because of the involvement of law enforcement, the FBI, and the government. The Iceman shows us by its reality that what we think about ourselves and about the, the, again, the fauna on Earth is just not the way it is. Many questions still remain. The most important, perhaps, is where is the Iceman today? Is it locked away in a secret vault? Some suggest all the attention from the FBI buried the Iceman for eternity in an unmarked grave, burying the truth, but not the mystery. from mysterious hairy bipeds to our own pampered pets. After the break, Animal X looks at creatures said to predict natural disasters and meets a geologist with a proven earthquake prediction theory based on pets that flee before tremors. Before quakes, the numbers will double or triple or quadruple, and that gets me nervous. Welcome back to Animal X. Many animal lovers attest to having pets with psychic tendencies. But what about those creatures that have a strange ability to sense impending doom on a grand scale? Time now to meet some pets behaving madly. Severe natural occurrences have threatened the Earth's inhabitants since the beginning of time. While humanity has reduced the risk of falling victim to these events with scientific endeavor, animals have only their instincts to rely on for survival. My dogs will go into earthquake mode if there's gonna be an earthquake in Japan, Jakarta, wherever on the planet. Musty will show uh, different behavior when incoming storms or changes of weather are about to come about. I think we always have to work on the idea that animals are always looking after their own best interests. Animal X travels to Perth, Australia, and San Francisco, USA, to investigate the extrasensory perceptions of animals and their ability to predict extreme natural occurrences long before humans. 
Del Getz has raised and bred huskies for over 30 years. During this time, she's studied their behavior closely and believes they sense environmental changes long before we can. Well, I started out looking at earthquakes, uh, and I developed my profile of behaviors based on earthquakes, and I found that about 24 to 36 hours in advance of an event, my dogs began to show uh, certain types of behaviors, no, most notably hyperactivity. Then uh, I noticed that there were differences in behavior for thunderstorms and windstorms. In 1989, Dell began a daily log of her Huskies' behavioral patterns in an attempt to understand and read their language. Every day I have a page devoted to their behavior. The things that I note are weather, phases of the moon, any remarkable solar data. If there are earthquakes, I will log that and their magnitudes and locations. After 12 years of noting down her dog's behavior and significant natural events, Dell believes there is no question her animals are tuned into what nature will deliver next. It's a learning process for me. I mean, they know, you know, with a capital K, uh, and it's up to me to learn to speak and understand Husky. Another pet owner who notices a difference in his animal prior to atmospheric changes is wildlife biologist Barney Lenheim. Yeah, she'll generally get uh, hyperactive before a storm comes in or when the weather's changing. She is a feral horse, uh, and I think it does make her more sensitive because in the wild, a horse with bad habits doesn't survive. Their natural breeding will include being very sensitive and intuitive of what's around and what's happening in the air. Dr. Graham Adams is an animal behaviorist who agrees that natural selection plays a role in animal sensory perceptions. A serious storm or a serious earthquake can seriously affect the well-being of animals. Your species has been around for millions of years and, and you've survived. And it's very important that you recognize impending disasters. But what is it that animals are actually picking up on which allow them to predict changes hours or even days before they occur? When we're talking about um, a major natural disaster, we believe that there's a change in the natural forces of our planet Earth itself, the magnetic forces. And many animals, perhaps because of the uh, mineral magnetite in their cells, they're able to detect the change in magnetic forces. Retired geologist Jim Berkland has been researching earthquakes for over 30 years and believes animal behavior is the key to predicting these devastating events. The animals are very much aware of a constant magnetic field. And when it begins to sputter, it causes them to be a little concerned. They may not know about an earthquake for sure, but just something's unsettling in their environment, and so one way they respond is by running away. During his many years of research, Jim has devised a controversial earthquake prediction theory he believes is more accurate than anything conventional science has to offer. I've been collecting lost animal data since September of 1979. Uh, I use lost and found clippings from the local papers. Every day I count up the missing dogs and cats and birds. When I see a sudden increase without a known cause, I suspect a quake. With a 75% accuracy rate, Jim went public with a prediction in 1989 when he realized there were more lost pet notices than usual. And the missing cats went to 27. The most I'd ever seen before was 16. Meanwhile, the dogs, instead of being 15 or 20, went to 58. And we had whales beaching themselves. And I said, something's big on the, in the works. And I called the Gilroy Dispatch reporter and said, we're due for a six and a half to seven. Uh, during the next week between the 14th and 21st of October. On October 17th, Jim's prediction came true when a huge 7.1 quake shook San Francisco. Before quakes, the numbers will double or triple or quadruple, and that gets me nervous. Is modern science overlooking a source of information which could not only save time and money, but lives? Could tuning in to the sensory perceptions of animals lead us closer to unraveling some of the Earth's greatest mysteries. They aren't doing anything that's terribly extraordinary to anybody except people who don't believe. 
The animals that we're looking at today, the dog or the cat sitting at our feet, these are the animals which have survived. And these survivors are aware of the natural forces of the earth. From animals that can save to those that can startle. After the break, Animal X investigates the case of Britain's golden frogs. Are they a divine gift from the Virgin Mary, as local legend states? And according to some of the accounts, she took a stick, stuck it in the ground, and clear water came out. And she said, as a further sign, there will be golden frogs. Welcome back. There are many tales of animals born of folklore and legend. In the west of England, it's the bizarre case of golden frogs, shimmering amphibians said to surface every few centuries, and ones with a divine connection. Since the dawn of time, animals have played a central role in religious teachings and legends. This picturesque town in Devon, England, is the setting of one such story. Handed down through the centuries, it still mystifies modern scientists. It is the legend of the golden frogs. I was taking some rubbish out one night, and what should I see leaping along in the half-light but a beautiful golden frog? I've seen three golden frogs in my professional career. But it's quite impossible to be able to get to the real truth of the matter. To investigate, Animal X travels to the small town of Bovey Tracy in Devon. It is known as the gateway to Dartmoor, one of England's last great wildernesses and home of the golden frogs. Delving back into historical archives, English cryptozoologists Jonathan Downs and Richard Freeman unearthed a half-forgotten tale dating back to the 15th century. According to local legend, that's when a peasant woodcutter living in Bobby Tracy met the Virgin Mary. Well, in the middle of the night, there was a knock on the door, and the poor woodcutter went and went and answered the door, and there, waiting for him, was a beautiful lady, all dressed in white with a glowing halo around her. The woodcutter gave the woman his last food and a bed for the night. In the morning, his kindness was rewarded. Miraculously, his dying son had been cured, and the mysterious lady offered an amazing gift. I will make a holy well. And according to some of the accounts, she took a stick, stuck it in the ground, and clear water came out. And she said, as a further sign, so people will remember my visit to Mary Street, there will be golden frogs. It is said bright yellow frogs did appear and can still be found in the region today. Downs and Freeman set out to find St Mary's Spring and the golden frogs. On the wall opposite us, you can actually see what is or what appears to be an ancient Dartmoor cross and appears to be a genuine bona fide holy well. And it's tempting to theorise that that pinpoints the place that we're standing now as the spot of where the old woodcutter had his cottage and had his visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. But the men were not convinced until Freeman encountered one of the mysterious creatures for himself. I managed to capture it. It was a uh, young female, a bright canary yellow in colour, and we kept it in captivity and studied it for several weeks. And we found that in captivity, it reverted to the more usual olive green colour of the common frog. Bovey Trace's Catholic parish priest, Monsignor Adrian Toffolo, says legends like the Virgin Mary's golden frogs are almost impossible to prove or disprove. Stories don't uh, come from nowhere. There is generally some sort of basis uh, for legends. Um, but of course, it's shrouded in the mists of time. It's very difficult for us to, uh, to know exactly what the, what the truth was. But scientists often dismiss the amazing amphibians as a byproduct of global warming or a pollution induced phenomenon. But Dr. Trevor Beebe, an amphibian expert from the University of Sussex, believes the strange creatures could be the result of inbreeding. I doubt whether the colour in itself is a threat, 
What I do think is that this underlying problem of populations becoming more isolated and genetically inbred is certainly a threat. Naturalist Mark Nicholson is the education officer for Cornwall's Wildlife Trust. He believes the golden frogs found throughout the west of England are a natural freak of nature and that they may be an ominous warning to humanity. What it could be is a warning sign to us, you know, that something is changing in the environment and often frogs do warn us in advance of other creatures really that there are changes going on in the environment. The medieval legends would tend to give weight to the idea that these frogs have been around for a very long time and they come in cycles, they appear perhaps every 200 years or so. So while scientists continue to ponder this bizarre colour morph, many local people are convinced their golden frogs may simply be the result of divine intervention. From the Minnesota Iceman, a hoax or real-life creature frozen in time, to natural-born survivors, pets that can predict major disasters, and golden frogs that may well be heaven-sent. The mysterious tales of the animal world continue to fascinate and perplex us. After all, it's said there are stranger things in heaven and earth than we can think of. You've just seen some of them on Animal X.